Most people don't even know that this feature exists. So today we're going to be learning exactly how to link your options trades to the underlying stock price within the Thinkorswim mobile app. This is going to allow you to set your target price or your stop loss based on the underlying stock price rather than the option price. So if we go ahead and begin with an example, let's say I wanted to trade Netflix right now. So go ahead and hit that little search box in the upper right, just like I did. We'll throw in the symbol NFLX right here. Then either click on it in the list down below or hit done in the lower right hand corner. We can see that then takes me to the stock profile page for Netflix, where we can currently see it's trading for about 974.40. And in this case, let's just say we were still bullish on Netflix. And scrolling down below, let's say I was looking at trading the 21 February of 2025 expiration. So we'll go ahead and click on that expiration in order to open it up down below. Looking down here, we can now see the 915 strike down in the center, going all the way out to the 1080 strike. And for this example, let's just say we were looking to trade the 1000 strike calls if Netflix ever crossed above 1000. So looking here at those calls, it looks like it's currently going for 1535 by 1570. And since in this example, I do want to buy it if it crosses above 1000, we're going to go ahead and begin by clicking on the asking price right here where it says 1580. You can see that immediately took me to the order ticket. And for those of you who don't see that happen immediately, if we go ahead and close out of this by hitting close in the upper left, the only reason it took me to the order ticket immediately is because up here at the top, right here where it currently says spread single, that's the only reason. Because if I had something else selected, or in this case, if I had custom selected, it would have just put the order ticket up at the top and I would have had to hit next once again. But since I've got single here selected, it builds out the order ticket immediately. So if we go ahead and scroll back down to the 1000 strike calls, and again, go ahead and click on the asking price, which is currently 1615. We can again see it takes me to an order ticket to buy this call. And right here in the top left, it currently says I want to buy it using a limit order. Good for the day. And currently I'm saying I want to buy this option for $16 even. But instead of basing this trade off of the underlying option price, saying I want to buy it for $16, I instead want to place this order to say, if it ever crosses above 1000 that's when I want to buy this call option. So what we're going to do is actually scroll down a little bit and find this conditions window. And then to open it, we'll simply click on it. Then down below, you can either see time conditions, so I could say only buy this call option after 2 p.m. or only submit this order after 2 p.m. Or what we can do is submit based on a market condition. So if we go ahead and click on that little toggle there, we then have the ability to add a condition. And in this case, we're gonna be adding a pricing condition. So we'll go ahead and click on add a condition. You can then see it defaults to the current symbol we're currently looking at. So right up there, it is based off Netflix. Right now, it's based off the price of Netflix, so the mark price. But if I were to click on that, you can see the other conditions that we could base this trade off of. So we could say if the bid price of Netflix ever gets above or below a certain price, if the asking price ever gets above or below a certain price. The mark is usually what I'm going to use to base off the price, so that's the one we're actually going to use today. But below that, you could also base it off of volatility. You could base it off of volatility differential. And if we were doing this on the Thinkorswim desktop platform, the one that you download to your computer, we could essentially base this off of anything. So we could say if the 50 day moving average crosses above the 200 day moving average, or if there is a bullish MACD crossover, I want to place this trade. On the computer, you can basically base it off of anything, but in the mobile app, this is what we're limited to. And in this case, we are going to leave it set to the mark price. And remember what I wanted to do. I wanted to trigger this order based off of the price crossing above a thousand. So in this case, because I'm saying if the price is at or above, I'm going to go ahead and click on the trigger here, which currently says at or below. And here we can go ahead and flip it over to at or above. And then we can simply enter the price at which I want this to be activated. So in this case, the threshold is going to be a thousand dollars or higher. So now with that said, if we come up to the upper right and hit done, you can now see my condition has been added saying I only want to place this order if Netflix crosses above a thousand. And then remember the order that's going to be submitted is this up here above. 
so this limit order to buy it at 1615 or better. Now, the problem with leaving this as it is right now is that this order would probably never fill. Because remember what I'm saying. I'm saying I only want to submit this order when Netflix crosses above 1000 which means this call option is probably trading for a whole lot more than $16. Now, technically, that doesn't have to be the case. I mean, it could be worth a whole lot less if that happens in a few days from now or a couple weeks from now. But because I have no idea what the price of this option is going to be when Netflix actually crosses above 1000 I probably don't want to put in a manual price like this. Now, I could simply flip this over from a limit order to a market order, which simply means that whenever Netflix crosses above 1000 I want to buy this call option for whatever it's trading for at that time. So put in a market order, and I'll take whatever the price is when that happens. Now, in my case, personally, I'm not comfortable with that, even though it is guaranteed to get filled. I'm guaranteed to take whatever the next best price is. But because options can be very illiquid at times, I'm not willing to take just whatever the market's willing to give me. So if I still wanted to use a limit order, let's go ahead and flip this back over to limit. But I do not have a price in mind, but I am willing to take whatever the price is within reason. What I could do is come over to the left where it currently says manual or man, which means I'm putting in the price myself. And instead, if I click on that, I could base it off of the mark price of that option whenever the stock crosses above 1000 Now, I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but let's just come down here and click on mark in the list below. And right now, you can see my offset amount is set to $0.10. Cents, but to make this make a little more sense for right now, let's change this to 0 for right now. And what I'm essentially saying right now with this current order is, whenever Netflix crosses above 1000 I want to buy this call. However, instead of putting out a market order to take whatever the next best price is, I do want to use a limit order, and I want that limit order to go in at whatever the mark price of that option is at that time. So let's just say when this order activates, so let's say Netflix goes up to $1,000 tomorrow, and when this order activates, this $1,000 call is going for $30 by $31. Now, because I've said I want my order to go in as a limit order, but at the current mark price, my order is going to go in right between the current bid and ask. So in this example, the midpoint or the mark price would be $30.50, and that's what my order would go in as. Now, because I'm specifying a price, it's not guaranteed to be filled, but essentially I'm protecting myself in case, let's just say that spread is insanely wide, and I just pick up whatever the current asking price is, essentially way overpaying for this option. So this just allows me to add a little bit of an extra layer of protection, but you got to decide what you're more comfortable with. Now, the other thing we might do is change this over from a day order to a GTC order, so it goes out every single day until it gets filled. I'd be a little bit iffy on doing that unless I'm going to watch it more closely and basically just cancel it when the time comes. Because remember, the value of that option is going to be changing pretty dramatically day by day, especially in my case, because this option only has a few weeks left to it. So time decay is going to be really working its way out of this contract, and I may no longer want to buy it in a week from now. So in my case, I probably normally would leave this as a day order only, but it is available to you. Now, if this was all we were doing and we were happy with it, we would simply come down below and hit review in the lower right. And then if everything looked right, which again, it does lay it out right here. It's saying I want to buy the thousand strike call for Netflix whenever Netflix crosses above a thousand. And if that was it, we would simply hit send in the lower right hand corner and that would be it. Now, in my case, this is my real account, and I do not want to place this order, so I'm going to go ahead and hit edit in the upper left to get out of this, and then hit close. But that's how we can place an option order that's based off of the underlying stock price. And if we wanted to go through another example, but let's say one of my current positions that I want to get stopped out of if the stock price goes against me too far, what we'll do is go down to my positions page, where we can see all my positions listed out. And taking a look at a few of these, let's take a look at my Chewy position. You can see down here, I currently have 300 shares of stock and I've sold three covered calls against that position. Right now, I've sold the 35 strike calls. The stock is currently 38.63, so I am about $3.63 in the money at the moment. You can see I originally sold these calls for 271. It's currently 385. And let's just say I wanted to get stopped out of these calls if Chewy goes a little further up. So let's say I want to get stopped out if Chewy ever goes above $40 a share. 
So what I'm going to do, because I want to get stopped out of these call options I sold, if Chewy ever goes above 40, I'm going to go ahead and check mark the box on the left hand side. That'll then open up a menu down below, giving me the option to either roll this option or close it. And in this case, I do want to select close selected. I then want to come down below and add my condition. So in this case, remember the condition is a market condition. We can then hit add condition. I then want to specify that I want to buy back these call options if the stock price is ever at or above. So remember, we clicked on at or below and are going to change it to at or above. And I'm saying if Chewy's stock price ever goes above 40, with that set, we can now come up above and hit done. And now with my condition there, it's again saying the order above is only going to submit when Chewy's stock price is at or above $40 a share. And then remember, the order that's going to be submitted is this limit order up here to buy it back for $3.90 or better. And because I do not know what this option is going to be trading for when Chewy goes above 40, what I could do is either flip this over to a market order saying I'll take whatever the price of the option is at that time, or I could instead leave it as a limit order. But instead of putting in a manual price myself, because I have no idea what the price of the option is going to be at that time, I'm instead going to link it to the mark price of the option. And actually, I'll leave it as the offset of plus 10 cents, which means whatever the price of the option is at that time, or the mid price of the option is at that time, I'm willing to pay as much as 10 cents more than that. So again, if at that time, if when this option activates, the option is going for $5 by $5.50, normally if the offset was set to zero, my order would go in at $5.25, saying go ahead and buy it back if I can get $5.25 or better for it. But in this case, because I've got an offset of $0.10, cents, I'm actually saying I'm willing to go in $0.10 cents higher than that at $5.35, making this order more likely to fill. Because I'm saying I'm willing to pay a little bit extra, a little bit higher than the midpoint in order to make this trade more likely to fill. But again, because it is a limit order, there's no guarantee. So this is certainly not a perfect stop. But it is saying if Chewy were to go above 40, put out an order to get me out of it. And I'll take whatever the current mid price of the option is at that time, plus 10 cents. And for this one, let's say I did want to make it good till canceled. So we'll go ahead and flip that over. And now if we come down below and hit review. This is again essentially acting as a stop for this option. Because again, I'm saying if the stock price ever goes above 40 and I start to get really tested on these cover calls that I sold and I really don't want to get assigned and actually sell these shares, what I'm saying is if it goes above 40, just buy back these three covered calls that I sold. And just like before, since I don't really want to place this trade, we'll go ahead and go back to edit and then we'll close this out. But that's all you have to do in order to add conditions to your trade. And just like anything else, if we were to turn this into a bracketed order, in order to say, first, I want to buy this option. And then if the stock price goes up to this level, I want to sell it. Or the stock price goes down below this level, I want to sell it. It would be the exact same process. You would have to do it one at a time, adding those conditions like we just went over. But it's exactly the same. But hopefully that helps. And please let me know if you still have any questions about this. And maybe I can go more in depth on it. But otherwise, if you're still interested in learning more, go ahead and check out this next tutorial video and hopefully it helps you out. And I'll see you all there.